Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Pauline Esselu, and, and I'll be moderating this live webinar. This is part three of our four session webinar series. If you haven't watched the previous sessions, the recordings are posted on the registration site and are available on demand. Please do watch them. We're super excited to have you here. And as always, we welcome all feedback and comments to help us, to help us improve future webinars. Today's session is part one of PyTorch Framework and will be presented by Mohit Deepujari from our application engineering team and Harish Supermani and Hawkins Yao from our field application engineering team. In today's session, you will learn the basic steps to migrate your PyTorch model and train on Gaudi, and we will also show you how to configure distributed training. Additionally, you will be introduced to techniques to analyze your model and identify potential performance bottlenecks. Again, if you attended our previous sessions, you know the housekeeping notes, but for those of you joining us for the first time, I will review them again before we begin our session. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available for later viewing. If you have any technical issues or questions, please use the chat feature to reach us. During the presentation, you um, can use the Q&A section to ask any questions from our experts at any time. They will respond to your questions throughout the session, but we will also allocate a few minutes at the end of the presentation for additional questions. Now, I would like to welcome our first presenter, Mohi. Go ahead, Mohi. Right. Thanks, Pauline. Hello, everyone. I'm Mohit Pajari from Habano Labs Application Engineering Team. And today I'm going to show you how we use Habana Gaudi processors with the PyTorch training scripts, how to use those. So as you can see, today we are using the Amazon EC2 DL1 instance of Habana Gaudi. Uh, this is the Habana Gaudi processor available on AWS which you can use today. And for this, we are going to use a special Amazon machine image with the Habana Synapse AI software and the uh, PyTorch uh, running on an Ubuntu OS. So a quick overview of the Habana PyTorch software stack. As you can see in this image, we have uh, at the top the application layer where you define your deep learning models like BERT, ResNet. All of these are supported today on the Habana software stack. And then uh, right underneath uh, this application layer, you have the PyTorch framework layer, where uh, this is a special type of a PyTorch framework customized for Habana Gaudi. It, has, uh, it allows for the registration of the device and it also supports two modes of execution. You have the eager mode of execution, which is the basic mode of execution in PyTorch, where the ops get executed as and when they are encountered in the training script. On the other hand, you have the lazy mode of execution, where the ops get accumulated in a, comp in a graph, and then the Synapse AI graph compiler optimizes them. And the execution of the graph only happens when a tensor value is requested by the user. So this enables uh, high performance and also allows for um, optimizations. A person, you, uh, you would usually prefer the lazy mode when you're putting your models into production. So here, uh, this is a slide that talks about some of the scripts changes that you would need to migrate your PyTorch script to run on a Gaudi processor. So beginning at the top, you, you start with importing this very important function call, which is known as load Habana module. And this will be part of the Amazon machine image on the AWS DL1 instance. All you need to do is just import it like this. After importing this, you need to uh, make this call. What this does is it, loads the PyTorch plugin into the application. And then it makes your PyTorch framework aware of the Habana Gaudi device. And this is how you would uh, initiate your device. You simply uh, make a call like this, the torch.device API call, which you would generally use for a CPU. Uh, you need to 
pass this HPU label in there and that targets your HPU device. Once you have the device ready, you need to load your model to the device. And this is how you would do it. Since uh, we support execution by lazy mode, this is how you would enable a lazy mode operation in your training, training script. You need to uh, set this special environment variable to one. And this is a Habana Gaudi specific environment variable. Once you have the lazy mode of execution enabled, here is another uh, Torch library that you'd need to import. And uh, this Torch library has this special API call called mark step. This mark step API call is necessary to trigger execution uh, whenever you need to read some data back from the Habana device. Uh, there are very specific instances or places in your script where you can use this mark step API call. Some of the examples are given here, like right after the optimizer.step call and between the loss.backward and optimizer step call of the training script. I will now walk you through how uh, these changes run in real time and show you in a Jupyter notebook. All right, so here I have a AWS DL1 instance running in the background. As you can see, it has the special Habana PyTorch image with the Synapse AI software stack and the Habana PyTorch framework. So let me SSH into that machine. And I've already SSH'd into that machine. I'm going to start a Jupyter notebook that will allow me to run my script, my training script. Now my Jupyter notebook is running. I have the URL with me. Here it is. All right. So this is a basic training script with a very simple example. We begin with basic imports being it for a PyTorch training script. And then we are defining a toy model here with very few layers. Here are the steps that we'll be executing during training. But first we need to look at the launcher function. And this is the launcher function here. As you can see, uh, we're going to use the Habana frameworks load Habana module function call. This is the first step that you need to do to make your script aware of the Habana device. And since we are going to use the lazy mode, we're going to set this environment variable to one like I showed earlier. And here we're going to step into the actual training code. And this is the actual demo code for training. We begin here, we instantiate the toy model and then load it to our Habana device. <clears throat> Next, since we are using the lazy mode, we want to enable that and we want to import this HD core module to integrate with the Habana bridge. Once uh, the model has been loaded and you are in the execution, uh, lazy execution mode, you need to make a mark step API call to make your system ready. Once that is done, uh, we are basically declaring the loss function and optimizer here. It's a very basic loss function and also a very basic SGD optimizer that we are using. Now, this is where the training loop usually begins. You begin with clearing out the gradients of the optimizer. You do a quick forward pass by passing the inputs to the to their device. I'm passing some random inputs to my model. And also I have, uh, I'm using some random label targets. Both have been sent to the device. Now we're going to do calculation of the loss and the gradients. This is how we are doing it. 
the last function, uh, then uh, we, we do a backward API call on the last function. This sends uh, the gradients back up the network. And since we are using the lazy mode, we need to make the execution happen for this. And we call the max step API call. Once again, the, we update the weights of the optimizer after the, after the backward pass. And again, since we are using lazy mode, we need to do one more call to the max step. Now this uh, demarcates the training iteration. And in, if, it, if we were in a loop, we would begin this whole process all over again. And once you're done with your training, you exit. So let's do a quick run of this demo. I'm going to press the launcher function. We're running live on the AWS instance. As you can see, we began the script by starting loading the Habana modules. As you can see from the logs, it is using the HPU device. We loaded the model to the HPU device. Then we imported the Habana HD core module to talk with the Habana bridge. And we enabled lazy mode. We did a quick forward pass by passing random inputs. We did the loss and gradient calculation. And we updated the weights. And then we exit the script. So this was a very basic example of how to run a PyTorch model on a Habana Gaudi instance. I will now pass over to my colleague here, Harish. He'll talk over how you run PyTorch training in a distributed fashion on the Gaudi instance. Thank you, Mohit. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Harish and I am uh, from Habana Labs, part of the AE network, AE uh, application engineering team. And uh, I will show you today how to uh, basically, from what Mohit has shown uh, on how to run a single process um, mo uh, model to a distributed uh, training uh, model. As you can see, the distributed training uh, libraries and APIs are integrated in the PyTorch Chavana bridge. Um, and so this is accessible just like any other PyTorch uh, through the PyTorch framework, basically, uh, through the distributed PyTorch distributed framework. So now I will show you um, how that can be done. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, so basically Gaudi scaling and data parallelism is achieved through the Torch distributed package, which is uh, supported by the PyTorch in general and using the DDP, the distributed data parallel. And so what happens in this is the model is replicated uh, on every process, uh, depending on how many process you want to replicate on uh, or distribute, run the distributed training on. And each of these model replicas will be fed with a different set of input data samples. Uh, the distributed data parallel package uh, also takes care of the communication between the processes and also keeps the model synchronized during training. Um, so for the migration guide, on top of what uh, uh, Mohit has already shown in the code, we just need to add a few more um, imports and uh, and to initiate and run the distributed data parallel. Uh, so basically, we import the torch and NN parallel um, through the distributed data parallel, and also the main the key uh, thing for DDP um, is to import the Habana framework torch through HCCL backend. So the SCCL library um, is what um, provides the communication, uh, collective communications library package, which is uh, what is providing the uh, support for the Torch uh, distributed data parallel uh, uh, support for the framework. So uh, here you can see the we uh, st start off the after importing the HCCL package, we also initiate 
the pro init process group, uh, which basically tells the framework on what backend it needs to use and, and also the number of uh, the world size, which is basically the number of process that you want the distributor training to run on. Uh, it can go from you know um, four, eight, sixteen, depending on the number of nodes you have in the hardware setup. And also the rank here is nothing but the card number, um, which is the ranks are basically ranked and the number of Gaudi cards in your uh, in your setup. And the ranks by default start from zero. And if it's you know eight eight nodes, then you are ranked from zero to seven, uh, and so on. So. Uh, so the default rank is always zero uh, for our purpose. And here we will use, for this example, we will use a world size of eight. And uh, once the, the inner process is invoked, um, you know, the threads are spawned. And from then on, you're gonna see a multi-threaded or a multi-process, um, you know, low, uh, training, um, uh, a training setup. So basically you move uh, the model to the HPU and you invoke the uh, API training APIs uh, uh, with the uh, with the max memory size and uh, other parameters here. So I will show you uh, in a minute uh, how to how this differs from the differs from the uh, setup uh, of the single uh, training process. So you have the imports for the Torch, uh, the distributed data parallel APIs uh, from PyTorch. Then we import the Habana Frameworks Torch uh, core, the HCCL. We init process with the backend HCCL uh, and also specify the rank and world size. Um, then we move the model to the HPU. So from here on till the you know, uh, end of the process group, or you know, until we tear down the process group, we're going to see the number of threads invoked and running each of these steps in parallel. Um, so each of these uh, process would, you know, move the model to the HPU, which is basically replicating the model, uh, the models over the number of process, and then we would run the training as before. Um, you know, we specify the loss functions. Um, optimizers and run the forward pass, update the weights and um, loss and gradients. And finally, we uh, tear down the process group. Uh, so let's go ahead and see uh, how this program works. Um, so I'm on the setup um, running the PyTorch here and I invoke this uh, disk Torch distributed launch and run the example dot uh, uh, py, uh, python script over world size of it. As you can see, it's loading um, models to each of the HPUs here after we initialize the Habana modules. And uh, once that is done, the forward pass is run on each and every um, HPU and the corresponding loss and gradients and the weights are calculated and updated. And finally, we exit um, each of the HPU uh, as part of the teardown process. So this is how the uh, a sim the simple, um, this is a very simple model that, and we've demonstrated how to actually port a, a single process module to a distributed training setup. Um, moving on to the next topic, uh, which, which is regarding the convolution weight ordering in PyTorch. And in this case, um, you know, the default PyTorch convolution weight ordering is uh, filters first, as everyone knows, and uh, Gaudi hardware um, supports filters last format, which is the RSCK format. K stands for the filters, C, the number of channels, R and S, height and width. This is similar to the NCHW or N NHWC format in TensorFlow, if you are already familiar. So we need a weight ordering uh, to, to keep you know, uh, sanity among all the default convolution or vision models across platforms. We keep the, you know, uh, the PyTor default PyTorch weight ordering 
uh, we maintain that always when we save or load uh, on the CPU. So, so what happens here is that we we have we have support for two other um, uh, APIs called permit params and permit momentum, which is basically helps you in converting uh, uh, the weight ordering for the weights and also dependent tensors um, from the filters first to filters last, um, if you have to run it on Gaudi hardware. So uh, the scenario that I'm explaining here is a basic scenario where you initialize a model on the CPU, uh, which is by default uh, filters first, you load the model to HPU, you then invoke the permit params and permit momentum API, which you have to implement to do the conversion. And once you do that, uh, then you run the training. And uh, uh, and if you have to copy back to the, uh, so this is the basic step of conversion prior to training so that the, you know, it isn't compliant with what the Gaudi hardware supports. Now, there are other scenarios where uh, we support uh, also the pre and post uh, conversions. For example, uh, uh, you can refer more in the documentation for um, for more details of this. So basically, we have uh, other scenarios where we uh, load and you know, for example, if you save a checkpoint or initializing a checkpoint, uh, so the checkpoints are stored in the CPU. So that will be in the filters first format. You uh, you basically load the model to HPU. Uh, perm uh, run the permute params and momentum, convert the filters last, run the training. And if you have to save it back, you do a post uh, conversion as well uh, of the, say, uh, the checkpoints to the filters first format before you save it in CPU. And so you can go over the scenarios here. What I will show you now is uh, an example of uh, uh, how this is done. Uh, and this is part of the, this is, you can see the example MS code, uh, which is part of the hello world uh, PyTorch examples in the github.com uh, uh, Habana, Habana AI model references. So here you can see, um, you know, the permit params and permit momentum. Uh, these APIs are implemented, um, you know, how, how they're converting here from uh, the filters first to filters last. Um, and uh, so to, to filters first is you uh, fill, uh, and the filters last. So depending on pre and post, you uh, define your implementation and uh, and you do basically you call that before you call the final distributed data panel API. So once you uh, load the model after um, you know, in process groups, or if you're running distributed or a single, and then you call the permit params and permit momentum to uh, convert the parameters, uh, I mean, convert the uh, weight ordering. And uh, after that, you call the distributed data panel APIs. And uh, if you need to save a checkpoint, again, you need to call that again um, before saving it back to the CPU. So uh, that's roughly uh, what I had to uh, explain today um, on the convolution weight ordering. And with this, I will move uh, to the next topic, which would be presented by my colleague Hawkins on the TensorBoard usage on PyTorch. Hawkins. Okay, thank you, Harvis.
Right. So my name is Hakim Xiao. I'll be going over. So I'm I'm in the I'm a software engineer in the field application engineering team. Today I'll be going over the use of TensorBoard for PyTorch model training on Habana Gaudi. I'll be also going over the use of Habana Profiler for profiling your PyTorch training runs. So before going into the model and code, there's a quick word on what the TensorBoard is. It's a visualization toolkit to facilitate machine learning experimentation and presentation of the experimental results. Common usage include tracking and visualizing loss and accuracy, displaying images and textual results, and displaying other graphical illustrative figures. Now, TensorBoard was originally developed for TensorFlow, but can be used for PyTorch with reduced functionality, and we'll be showing that today. Now, TensorBoard consists of two parts. You choose the API so you can generate data to be injected into a TensorBoard and a browser viewing service that you can use to examine the generative data. Now let's head to over to the a Jupyter notebook that I have prepared to show a, a hands-on training session. So the model that we're going to be used today is the MNIST handwriting digit recognition model that everyone should be pretty familiar with. It consists of some convolution layer and some linear layers. It also has all the applications that we have done to make it run on Habana Gaudi. So for the HPU, for lazy mode, and everything that needs to run on Habana Gaudi. Um, with that, let's go ahead and install TensorBoard. Now, before we can use TensorBoard's utility functions, you need to instantiate something called assembly writer. And with the summary writer, you can call S scaler and common usage for that is to plot loss and accuracy in the training badges for, uh, as for the training progression. And you, you can call add an image to visualize the input image data. You can add figure to present and other graphics and figures that, and then we'll be using that for controlling a confusion matrix. Uh, you can also call add text to provide a textual information summary of your training run. Right, a quick word on confusion matrix. What it is, is a heat map showing where the predicted values fall relative to the true value. So you get, get a good feel of how your model, how well your model performs. To actually construct the confusion matrix, you need the support libraries at KLearn, Seaborn, and Pandas. So let's go ahead and install them. Okay, that completes. Now I'll go into the and show what, what the code that we need to add to generate data in TensorBoard. So we instantiate the summary writer, we import the support libraries. And in the training iteration loop, we add the code to plot the loss and accuracy for each batch and epoch in the training progression. And finally, we compute and accumulate the computer matrix. And derive the final computer matrix and present that into TensorBoard. We also add text to show, to show a, a textual summary of your training run. So let's go ahead and run that.
seems to be running into some kinks here. So, but I only made some run, so the results should already be in the, the directory. So let's fire up the tensor board and look at the results. Okay. And following the directions and point our browser to the service port. Now on the scalar tab, you can actually see the accuracy improves in each epoch of training in the training progression. And similarly, you can see the last goes down as the model converges. Going into the image tab, you can, well, we, we did construct an, an image grid and we placed the first set of sample image data that you can actually visualize here. And finally, you can see the confusion matrix. So the way to read this is on the diagonal line, you can see rec correctly recognized 0 as 0, 1 as 1, and so on. And outside of that diagonal line, you can see misidentified sometimes 5 as 0, two times in this sample, in this sample run, and, and so on. Sorry, so, but, I'm still not sure about that. Sorry about that. Uh, but all in all, the model performs well. Right, so with that, uh, we will go back to the notebook. Actually, we go back to the, the slides. All right, the next topic of, of our presentation that I'll be doing today is the the Habana Synapse AI Profiler. A quick word on what it is. It allows you to profile using execution time and UTBC and DMA. It performs bus monitoring, so bandwidth latency, outstanding transactions. So monitors, system counters, stores, cache misses, interrupts, and also profile host application performance and measure the Synapse API calls. Now with the profiler running for for PyTorch code, the easiest way to, to do that is to use auto code instrumentation by setting the, the environment variables, the bundle profile and the bundle prop config. The generate the output choice file will be placed in a file called default profiling.json. And you can build that in a web service, xltv.habana.ai. And where XLTV stands for Habana Labs Choice Viewer. Now, some, some more things to know about the CNS AI profiler. Before running it, you can set options, specific options using the XL prop config tool. Now it can be run in the COI mode or you can run in GUI mode. So if you are intimately familiar with it, you, you put the arguments on the command line and you you be able to do that using the COI mode. Or you are not, then uh, omit the arguments and it will bring up the GUI window so it's easier to follow. The configuration tool generates a, a file called propconfig.json, which, which will be placed in data banner in your home directory. Now the profiler runs inside a Docker container, but the GUI configuration does not. So for the common use case of the for profiling a model in the Docker container, you will want to run the configuration tool outside of the container and then use Docker copy to copy the configuration file inside the container in your home directory. Or if you are intimately familiar with the COI tool, then you can actually run it in that mode and not having to bring up the GUI window. Now let's go back to the notebook. All 
by a quick word on the profile link. So we'll be setting the final profile equal to one to, to do the auto code instrumentation. And let's go ahead and do the, do the training one. Let me stop. Actually, I need to start the process first. And then now we can go ahead and run there. Okay, now that completes. We'll go ahead and, and well, you look at that directory, you see that it generates, it, it generates a file called default profiling.json, which contains all the traces. Now, a quick word on the, Py, the PyTorch Scout integration architecture. We call that it can run in one of two modes, eager mode or lazy mode. In, lazy, in eager mode, the option will be run one at a time as coded in the model, or it can be run in lazy mode where the apps are executed only when the tensor results are needed. So the web compiler can actually optimize things and run the, the, run the training in the most efficient way possible. You'll be able to see that in action in the trace view today. So let's head over to the trace viewer. So xltv.habana.ai, where I already set up and let's load the trace file. Let's go ahead and look at first the eager mode operation. All right. If you look, if you look at the traces, pay attention to where the ops are happening, They're all happening on the host processor. And the training from start to finish takes about 38 seconds, a little less than 40 seconds, 38 seconds, okay, about 36 or 37 seconds. And it uses the DMA unit to transfer data down to the host, to, to the host memory. And most of that happening on the CPU. For comparison, let's look at the lazy mode operation. Right. As you can see, because the lazy mode allows the graph compiler to optimize things, it actually pushes some of the operation down to the MME for the convolution, convolution layers. You can zoom in and actually see that those activities. I use the, the general general basic motion multiplication for the convolution computation. And it used the TPC for the, the rest of the operations. And you look at the overall training time. In the, ego, in the lazy mode operation, it takes only less than less, less than 16 seconds to complete so almost a two x improvement on the training time. This is in comparison to the eager mode, because it takes again more than 35 seconds to complete. So in summary, with the, the profiler gives you information on the activities on the XPU. So you can examine subunit occupancy, memory access patterns, and potential bottlenecks so you can improve your training runs. Um, and that should wrap up 
everything, all the basic you need to know on the user pencil board and the Havana profiler. And I would like to thank you for your participation. And with that, I would want to turn the floor over back to Pauline. Thank you. Thanks, Hawkins. Um, all right, guys, I would like to open it up um, to Q&A. So at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A section. So if you want to go ahead and type up your questions, we could do that. Um, let's see. There's one. Does the profile work when running with multiple Gaudis? Hawkins, Harish, or Mohit? The question is, does the profiler work when running with multiple Gaudis? Right. Oh, uh, yes. That's actually a uh, work in progress. Um, most of the feature implementation is already in place, but there's some things that we still need to iron out. So look for the delivery of that feature in our next release of the software. Perfect. There was a question that came to us um, and we answered it via the chat, but I'll go ahead and put it out there so you guys know as well. It is, is TensorBoard profiling supported only in lazy mode and um, as um, Hawkins showed in the demo, it is supported in both eager and lazy mode. So that's the answer for that one. Um, let's see, here's another one. What is HCCL package? Harish, I think that's for you. Yeah, uh, so that's basically the, the Havana Collective Communications Library. And, uh, you know, it provides a set of communication primitives uh, to leverage the use of guard, uh, you know, the communication between Gaudi and the host. And, uh, and also it is used uh, primarily for the, uh, the DDP, uh, distributed data panel. Uh, uh, so you need the HCCL uh, libraries to actually support the distributed data panel. Perfect, thank you for that. Let's see, does Habana Gaudi support mixed precision like CUDA automated mixed precision? Uh, yes, Habana Gaudi has a special package called the HMP package that you need to import. And uh, what that does is it uh, puts a cast operation and uh, into on many of the ops, on many of the data on the ops, and that converts it to a mixed precision format. Perfect, thank you. Um, let's see, there's another one for you. How does the PyTorch framework become aware of Habana device custom ops and APIs? Right, um, like I showed in the demo, uh, one of the very first steps that we did was to import the PyTorch plugin using the load Habana module function call. Uh, that's a very important step. And uh, once that is done, uh, you can then start using the Habana APIs and uh, all the custom ops. All right, and then there's a question. I'm not sure if you guys could answer, but I'll go ahead and ask it. Um, but the question is, how is a convolution actually done on the HPU? Which dimensions are done in parallel? Are either of you able to answer that one? All right, so if we don't have an answer to that, we could kind of look at it and um, we could get back to you. Just go ahead, either post it on our forum or send us an email and we'll look more into that one for you guys. Um, okay, let's see, where can I find the Habana distributed distribution of PyTorch? Yeah, um, so on the AWS DL1 instance, uh, we are using the special Habana PyTorch uh, Amazon machine image, which you can find in the AWS marketplace. So once you have that running on your instance, uh, it comes pre-packaged with uh, all the plugins and the uh, and the things that you need to run Habana Gaudi on PyTorch framework, and that supports eager and lazy mode. Perfect. Um, how is Habana HPU device data handled? when that data needs to be um, reprocessed and used in computation to be presented in TensorBoard? 
right. So for that, you have to call the tool CPU, which, which transfer data back to CPU memory and then use that in your um, model training. Perfect. All right, let's see, any other questions? All right. Um, let's see, another one. Is there any delay between new PyTorch release and when the release is supported on Habana? I'm not sure if I understand that. Is there a delay between new PyTorch uh, release? I think basically is that, it, uh, yeah, I think we need to, maybe Greg can answer that uh, after the new PyTorch releases, we'll have to make sure that it works on the hardware and on the Habana framework and you got to plug the links. So yeah, there is going to be some delay. Yes, uh, we looked we looked to release uh, Every time we do a release, which is usually around six to eight weeks in time, we look at the latest version of PyTorch. So for the release that just came out uh, last week, we are supporting PyTorch um, 1.10.1. Perfect. Thank you for that. Right. All right. There's one more. Um, is it necessary to always use lazy mode? Um, you would usually use the lazy mode when you put your models into production, since that is the optimized uh, way to run things and it gives you better runtime performance. Uh, generally, you'd use the eager mode when you're porting the, your model to Habana Gaudi the very first time uh, and you want to make sure everything just runs smoothly. That's when you would use eager mode. But yeah, the lazy mode is recommended when you put your models to production. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, let's see. I'm not sure if I asked this one, but if I did, <laughs> I apologize. Um, is permute functions only required for distributed training? No, I think it's required for um, any training uh, for all convolution, uh, convolution and vision models. Perfect, thank you. All right, I think. We're good. I've looked at all the um, questions in chat and also in the Q and A. Um, anything else? I don't see any other questions coming through. All right. So I think with that we could go ahead and um, end this. So um, I want to thank you, um, thank our presenters, and also thank you for attending this webinar. Please do visit our developer site for documentations and GitHub for model examples. You can also access Gaudi on Amazon EC2 DL1 instances uh, for um, on-premise solution. We have partnered with Supermico. Um, so please visit our website, um, habana.ai for more information on Supermicro. Our next session is scheduled in two weeks on Tuesday, March 8th at 9 a.m using the same link that you used today. So please mark your calendars. In the meantime, if you have any other questions that we haven't answered or you come up with other questions, please go ahead, go to our um, Habana forum, um, post your questions there and our um, experts are always looking at them and they'll be responding back to you. Thank you so much for attending again and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.